Onyx Pharmaceuticals' mission is to improve health by inventing and developing innovative therapies and vaccines. And with me is CEO Seth Letterman to talk about uh, this new, um, perhaps, COVID treatment that you have. Uh, this is a humanized murine monoclonal antibody uh, for the treatment and also prevention, right, of COVID. So explain more detail about that. Thank you, Jane. Thanks for having me back. We're very excited. We licensed three monoclonal antibodies from Curia, and we're excited because the existing monoclonal antibodies that were developed to treat COVID no longer work. They've become obsolete because of the variants. So you may have followed that, for example, President Li Trump's life was saved by a monoclonal antibody. That was one made by Regeneron. There were two versions by Lilly. There is another version by Veer, co-marketed with GSK. And because of the variants, those four therapeutic antibodies are no longer available because they're no longer believed to work. It's just unbelievable. Because I remember when those treatments came out, it was so hopeful, you know, that that would at least get us through till there was a vaccine, and now they don't work anymore. <laughs> right, well, the good news is that although there are no antibodies available, the people that really need them now are people who are elderly, have medical comorbidities or who are immunocompromised and that for example organ transplant patients people that have a transplanted kidney liver heart mm -hmm. and since we're involved with that that group of doctors and those patients with another program we're very interested in helping the organ transplant recipients so what we're doing is bringing forth new antibodies that we believe can be effective against the variants, particularly the new variants. And hopefully this will give another sigh of relief for those people. Yeah, is that treatment available yet? I know you obtained the license, but is it out and available? Not yet, okay. we're still in development mm. and we're, um, it's a very exciting area because this whole group of therapies, as I mentioned, that had been available is now obsolete. So we're really now on, on uh, you know, our, our, it's a crisis. Uh, yeah, I can't imagine putting all that work into something and then it's just, you know, another variant comes along. And where does this treatment fit with your, uh, with your pipeline of other COVID and other vaccine treatments? Well, we have a lot going on in infectious disease and particularly COVID. We have a 50,000 square foot R&D facility in Frederick, Maryland that's devoted to infectious disease research. And we also have a facility south of Boston in New Bedford, Massachusetts that is working on process development for new therapies like these antibodies. So we're, we have a lot going on in infectious disease and right now this seems to be the most immediate need mm. to have these kinds of therapies available for the elderly, the immunocompromised and organ transplant patients. Yeah, and with a smaller company, you could be more nimble, I feel like. Yes, we can be needs. more nimble and also we can be, um, we, our, our hurdle for product sales and, and overall value is lower than a big company. So I don't know how excited the big companies will be to come back into a market where products may only work for a year or two years. Yeah. Now we are taking a different tact from those earlier drugs. Those were all made from human blood, from human B cells. And we have a program like that too, but we think that the fact that the virus evades humans all over the world predisposes the virus to become resistant to the human antibodies, uh -huh. whereas these new antibodies are made in mice and mice don't get COVID, mice don't spread huh. COVID. So we think that that will be a, a slower process okay. of the um, immune evasion. Mm, fascinating. Now, uh, Tonix has a fully operational R&D center, an advanced development center for clinical scale manufacturing. How do those programs leverage Tonic's new capability to handle biologics? Well, for example, with the COVID changing and the variants coming, we have the capability to study antibodies, to generate antibodies and study antibodies in our own facilities. So our, our infectious disease research facility at Frederick, Maryland is fully equipped and certified to study 
for example, the SARS-CoV-2 virus, which is the, the cause of COVID. Mm -hmm. So it just makes us very nimble that we are in control of the speed with which things get developed. And we think that we can be more flexible, more versatile, for example, to continue to uh, show that the existing antibodies we have will be useful. And for example, if we need to change antibodies in the future to deal with those threats when they come. Yeah, and it's been a good year so far for a tonic stock. Uh, who are your top institutional shareholders? Um, thanks. Yeah, uh, just at the end of last year, between uh, Christmas and New Year's, uh, we, there was an announcement that we had a new institutional investor, um, Tang Capital which is a well-known biotech investor uh, from San Diego. So we're very grateful to have them file a 13G that they had bought about 7.5% of the company. Oh, wow. So we're really delighted that they're here, and we really hope to be able to attract additional institutional investors as our story evolves and people become more familiar with the really unique value proposition that we offer. Yeah, well, and of course, the more your stock goes up, the better for um, all the treatments that you're able to create and provide. So, yes. Thank you so much, Seth. Great to have an update. Thank you, Jane. Thanks.